If you or someone you know has recently been arrested in Northeast Florida, there's a good chance the mugshot has been posted somewhere on social media and community Facebook groups like Putnam County Mugshots 2.0 and Clay County, Florida Mugshots appear to screen grab mugshots from booking websites. Then they post those mugshots on their pages for all to see and also to comment on. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avanier joins us live to explain why some say this could be doing more harm than good in the community. Eric? Yeah, lots of opinions on this. And as you guys know, mugshots here in Florida are public record, which means anyone can access them from a jail booking site. Now, we as journalists sometimes use them as a visual aid in certain crime stories. But just because mugshots are easily accessible, some say it doesn't always mean people in those mugshots should have their faces plastered all over social media, especially without, with it, without context. Every day, a new mugshot is posted on Putnam County Mugshots 2.0 and Clay County, Florida Mugshots, group Facebook pages in which people are allowed to post all kinds of comments about the person who was arrested. Putnam County Sheriff Gator DeLoach says Putnam County Mugshots 2.0 is a double-edged sword. On one hand, the page helps the sheriff's office notify the public about a missing child or that a registered sex offender has just moved into the area. However, he says posting mugshots of people who were arrested for simple misdemeanors such as not paying child support or not showing up in court has no value to the general public. In my mind anyway, those aren't necessarily cases of significant public interest. Um, I don't really, personally, I don't understand what the need is for posting something like that. But at the same time, um, I understand that it's also public record. Well, look, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. It doesn't mean it's ethical just because it's legal. Kelly McBride is the vice president of the Craig Newman Center for Ethics and Leadership at the Pointer Institute, a journalism school and research organization in St. Petersburg, Florida. Her views on the indiscriminate posting of mugshots are based on media research. I think mugshots mug are exploitive and prejudicial. And I think that anybody who just posts them without any sort of explanation or even a common good or a purpose is really exploiting exploiting people and, and harming people and mostly harming people who are lower income. Here in the News for Jackson newsroom, reporters and news managers have daily discussions about how stories are to be reported both on air and on our website. Those discussions also include the use of mugshots. When discussing the use of mugshots, we consider things like the severity of the charges, especially if the accused is a minor. We also take into consideration if the accused has a documented history of mental health problems. A Putnam County woman who asked to remain anonymous sent News for Jax this message via Facebook. It was regarding Putnam County Mugshots 2.0. It says in part, their website makes people look guilty before innocent instead of innocent until proven guilty. So in the public's eye, you're already guilty when your mugshot gets posted on these pages. On Thursday, I sent Facebook messages to all the administrators of Putnam County Mugshots 2.0 and Clay County, Florida Mugshots. I was requesting an interview with them because I wanted to know the purpose of posting the mugshots, especially without any context or explanation of what led up to the person being arrested. Only one administrator responded to my message after publicly posting this screenshot of my request to see if anyone recognized me as a news reporter. Then she denied my request after some of the members posted comments to suggest I was fake. Crime is always a matter of... Ed Burke is a news media and so First Amendment attorney who specializes in media law. He the says these Facebook groups could find themselves embroiled in lawsuits if they are not removing mugshots when criminal charges against the accused have been dropped. The people whose mugshots are being posted here on social media, they, they're not without recourse, right? If the person who posts the mugshot doesn't follow up, let's say the person is acquitted um, and the mugshot stays out there, that can be defamation. And so the person in the mugshot can sue the person who posted it for defamation. Now, just yesterday, the Flagler County Sheriff's Office issued an alert about mugshot page extortion. They said it involved a Facebook group called Flagler County Mugshots that attempted to trick people into thinking the page was associated with the Sheriff's Office. They described it as a, quote, poorly veiled attempt to make money off the mistakes of others. Now, by law, if your mugshot is on one of these pages and you ask them to take it down, it is illegal for them to charge you to remove that mugshot. Mm -hmm. So 
as you can see, th I mean, this is definitely something people are talking about. Yeah, Eric, other than bug shots, was there anything else that, that raised flags uh, on these pages? Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, the other day I was checking out the Clay County share, the, the, I, was, I was checking out the Clay County, Florida mugshot, and I just happened to come across something that just shocked me, just blew me away. It was an unredacted report that so unredacted that it exposed, or shall I say, it identified the uh, a, a victim of sexual assault. And not just any victim, but a teenage victim of mm. sexual assault. That is a big no-no. Yeah. That Eric, is I mean, pretty yeah. shocking there. That report was later removed, though. It was later removed. In fact, I did reach out to the uh, Clay County Sheriff's Office. They were aware of it, um, and they told me that uh, when they last checked that it was it was removed. But uh, one, uh, a Clay County official did see that, that page. A lot of good points that you raised in this. Thanks so much, Eric. Thank you.